This conference will now be recorded. Okay, the time being um, approximately 7 p.m. I will call the Budget Committee for November 4th, 2020 meeting to order. And uh, we'll start with the uh, uh, if you're participating by phone or the GoToMeeting platform, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere with the meeting. Additionally, there is an opportunity for the public to attend the meeting in person. However, in order to maintain social distancing, only eight spaces are available and attendance is on a first come, first serve basis. Once the maximum limit has been reached. Anyone wishing to participate in the meeting must do so remotely. If anyone has a problem with remote access to the meeting, please email web at tiltonnewhampshire.org, which will be monitored during the meeting. And we will start with the pledge to pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Republic, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for I always want to say amen after. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the next order of business to review and approve minutes of October 28, 2020. Okay. Janice, uh, on page two, there's something about the department heads will need to be initiated. That you mean invited or? That's um, on other business that Bill Lawrence mentioned that the department has will need to be initiated. Yeah, yeah. So I, we can change that. Yeah. I was just wondering about the initiation. <laughs> <laughs> One addition that Dick had was for me to make a note that, um, that we had already um, voted on. Old, 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 Uh, 
I'll move we accept the uh, budget committee Wednesday, October 28th, meeting minutes. I'll second. Any discussion? Besides what we already had? Okay, I guess we need to go for a roll call vote. Um, why don't we start with uh, Ted? Yes. Captain Dawson? Dawson, yes. Bill Lawrence, yes. Christine Dembitsky, abstain. Skill, yes. Thank you. Okay, so next we will. In, um, no, it wasn't on that. Oh, okay. Didn't see. What's up? Just one other thing. Um, was it online? Because yeah, I asked about that. The minutes from the non public session for mm -hmm. review mm -hmm. and any corrections mm -hmm. that may be needed. There is one difference in the procedure, and that is I'll tap pass them out, but I will ask for them to be in return to me right after we make any corrections, please, because they have to be shredded. And we're doing that now? Probably, yeah, yeah. We could do it now as part of the minutes and then okay. just, um, I wouldn't make any comment. Well, how can we do that? But you know what? Jot down your comments, and I will make sure okay. that they. Uh, you can make the notation. Make the notation. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. Make your correction on the paper. Okay. You were there to listen to that portion. Oh yeah, I just. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice job on that. Mm. You know, I level. It shows. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to um, skip the outside agency discussion because Tim would like to go first. Um, Tim actually step down because to take care of sending something to Ted. So okay. You're on, Tim. Okay, great. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I would like to ask if the public has any questions, they, they can chime in at any time. That sure. should you come. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so uh, for the budget committee, I just want to let you know, uh, Ted, for you at home, um, I've sent out the attachments, the documents I'm going over tonight. So the purpose tonight is to take you through a high level overview of the departmental reports. So that as you meet with the department heads, you've got a general sense of the overall budget and where we are and what, what uh, budget drivers are uh, affecting the budget this year. So if you would uh, pull up the 
the first one is uh, just a high level kind of presentation. So <clears throat> the uh, the budget is up 5.2 percent over 2020's budget, and it's primarily due to two things. Uh, one is the building costs, and the second is uh, New Hampshire retirement increases. So now the numbers that you see on this first slide um, show that we're up $268,145. And that excludes the sewer commission. As, as you might recall, it's a pure pass through. So there's no effect on the tax rate. Our head count has gone up by one from uh, 19 to 20, and uh, that's uh, one full-time person in the Public Works Department. So our current headcount is 34. On slide three, the new police station costs that are in the budget, uh, it's a little bit complicated, but basically we got about 154,000 of additional costs. And then um, of that, uh, there is the interest payment. So uh, I'm trying to structure this in such a way that we stair step into the full payment of the building in 2022. So that in 2021, we're paying interest only, and in 2022, we're paying the full payment. So these are not to exceed numbers here that you see. Uh, well, first of all, the utilities are about $39,139. This is the estimates from the engineers for electric and gas. And it is proportionate to the building size. If you look at what we have above ground today and you extrapolate that into the square footage of the new building, it's uh, almost a one for one uh, ratio. So we're about five times the size of the above ground um, uh, square footage from where we are now, and we're about five times the cost of our current facilities. In the bond payments, um, we are pursuing New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank, but some other towns, and we're also looking at working through banks, some other towns have done them through um, uh, local banks. Belmont uh, went with Northway Bank, and the purpose for that uh, is that with a local bank, you don't you can negotiate that you don't have any prepayment penalties. So that if you get a windfall here or there, you can apply that and pay down your debt. Whereas with the bond bank, once you have your debt, that's it, unless they go through an entire refinance of that debt, which is, um, it happens, but it's kind of rare. How does the interest rate compare from one to the other? Uh, so the, uh, I'll give you an example with uh, Belmont, uh, they went with a 20-year, I think they got a 2.1% interest rate, whereas the bond bank was at about 1.7% for the same uh, period. So you really have to look at, you know, what are the, what are some of the, the benefits of that? Uh, I'll give you an example. If we sell our building, um, if and if we're with the bond bank, about the only thing we can do is let those funds go to the unassigned fund balance. And then the selectmen could, you know, year one and year two, they could apply some of that money towards the payments of the bond. Whereas if you're with a local bank, you could take the entire proceeds, the net proceeds of that sale and apply it to the principal and, and bring down your debt. So, uh, of course, that, you know, it's a little more expensive in terms of interest, but you have more flexibility. Um, so in any event, uh, right now, where we're look, we were, we've had a total expense of about 4.931 million between the architectural and engineering fees and the building construction costs. And uh, so, looking at how we can absorb the architectural and engineering costs that we've already paid, and then looking at the contingencies and if our uh, fundraising holds and everything else, this is probably the best case is around. 4.4, maybe 4.5 million dollar loan. And uh, so in this budget, you'll see there's $110,000 worth of interest payments. The, uh, and again, through New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank, uh, the, the total estimate wouldn't exceed 350,000 in uh, 2022. 
That's principal and interest. That's correct. Uh, our janitorial costs, of course, are, are larger because the square footage is larger. And then um, we there's a requirement where we have to have uh, fiber access for the communications between the police building and Belknap Mountain for communications. And in and of itself, it's very expensive to do. Uh, there's not a lot of fiber competitors in this area. And, um, and we're paying multiples of what they pay in Concord or other parts of the state where there's plenty of competition. Uh, so in looking at what we could do, um, the most logical and cost-effective uh, way of affording fiber at the PD and, and negotiating with uh, the company that is our, our best vendor for this because they already have a line up to Belknap Mountain is to incorporate the town hall as well. So here in town hall, we have expensive phone lines. Uh, voice over IP is very inexpensive. The fiber is expensive. But when you look at fiber alone for the police building, it is, um, you know, it's not justifiable. When we wrap in town hall, it's only about a $2,400 maximum cost over and above what we're paying now. And the way I net it out is about a $1,500 increase. So in other words, all town hall and PD would be on the same phone system. It would all be very reliable fiber and all of our data would be fiber, uh, both at the PD and here and uh, managed by the, this vendor. So, um, so in any event, uh, a long explanation of basically trying to find a cost-effective way of affording fiber at the PD is by wrapping in town hall. Tim? Yes. Is the town hall fiber going to be on town hall's budget lines, or is it included in the police? <coughs> it's in the IT. In it's in IT. the IT budget, yep. And then... Um, they had some fundraising and after fundraising, we're saying it's 4.4 million. So the originally fundraising was hoped to have been in the 400,000 plus category. It looks like uh, if everything comes in, we'll be around 100, 105,000. Mm. And, uh, you know, and I think some of that is just related to the, obviously the events of the year, right. the uncertainty. Um, but, uh, at the same time, there is a contingency line within the construction budget, and there's a contingency line within the town budget. And I, I think mm -hmm. uh, this this may be a little bit of a best guess, but I think this is about where we're going to end up. Um, you know, knock on wood, providing there's no uh, major issue that comes up between now and then. So. So no future additional fundraisers or anything like that. Uh, well, I don't know that any are planned, but uh, I'm sure we would accept money uh, anywhere it comes in. Well, they have uh, to go after it for. <laughs> What's that? They'd have to go after it. To well, yes, and I I know that uh, the chief has um, the chief has been successful in getting a number of companies to pay. Uh, there's a number that have done five thousand dollar amounts. There was the twenty five thousand dollar commitment from AutoServe that. Um, that you know, we're expecting very shortly. And then um, the new dealership in town also had made a commitment right. um, uh, of, I think, $10,000. So, uh, and then our, our um, I, I wanna say we've had uh, many of the $5,000 uh, donations. And then um, the uh, buy a brick and tile, that's about, uh, I want to say, somewhere between thirteen and 15000 in mm, Buy a there. book? A brick. Brick, brick oh. or tile. <laughs> yeah, you can have your name on one of the yeah. bricks. And... Yeah. <laughs> so in any event, um, uh, you know, now we don't have all that money in hand. Uh, but so, you know, these are projections. Um, so it could end up, uh, the bond amount could end up being higher. Uh, I doubt it's going to be much lower, but it is possible it could be lower. The um, on the next page, uh, the other cost items. So the retirement system, uh, it's and what's so curious about this is that from uh, in the last uh, biennium, they went down in uh, Group Two retirement by a full percentage point. Uh, 
in it. So basically the police um, uh, went down a full percentage point. And in looking at this, where they're going now up, um, you know, considerably uh, from 28 to 33 uh, percent, it makes you wonder you know, how how they're looking at this long term wise. But but these are the rates. Uh, we don't have an option of paying or not paying. Um, and so this this kicks in on July 1st, and the impact of the budget is an additional almost $54,000. In the budget, the town clerk tax collector's wage is budgeted at 3%. An and increase in 3%? I'm sorry? An increase? Yes, increase of 3%. Um, and that was what was approved last year. And as you may recall, um, she gets to put in the amount that she's requesting. And then it is ultimately determined by town meeting um, you know, to set that. The merit uh, lines are budgeted at 2% this year. In the past, they've been budgeted at 2.5%. But uh, invariably, the selectmen don't award all the uh, budgeted money. So it's not meant to say that some employees that exceed you know, and do such a great job aren't going to make more than 2%. They could. It's just up to the selectmen of how they apportion and uh, award the, the merit increases. Uh, it's just meant to more uh, appropriately reflect the total amount that's typically historically been awarded of the total. What were the so, merit raises based on the year before? What percentage? They've been two and a half percent um, since uh, 2011. That's what I thought. I had a question on the retirement system. How does this work? On so 14 percent of what? Oh yes, so uh, of wages. So. Um, so, so for, all the wages in the group. So, uh, so group one is essentially any full-time employee of the town of Tilton, uh, be it public works, town hall, or police department that is not, that doesn't have arrest powers or carries a gun. So it would be in the police department. It would be the uh, the dispatchers, at the um, uh, the administrative assistant, and the prosecutor those people would be group one. Everyone else at the PD, the chief, captain, lieutenant, all the officers would be group two. So uh, this retirement system is only for the police? No, no. So it's for all full-time employees. Okay, uh, so what you do is you take all of that, the massive, like say it's a million dollars for, and then 14% of that will go into a retirement system? Into the New Hampshire retirement system, that's right. Those okay, are the which employers. Back to them? No, no. So, uh, so it's, done on, a, on an actuarial basis. Uh, the employees also uh, contribute. So um, I don't know off the top of my head what it's going to in this uh, in this increase. But right now, the employees contribute um, in group one, 7% uh, and 11.15% in group two. So I believe that's what it is. Uh, we're there for very close. So in other words, the employee makes a contribution and then also the employer uh, makes a contribution. But it's it's not an optional thing that the town as a municipality um, and, you know, unless it, so it's going into out. a fund which will pay them back when they retire. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the, it's the state's uh, New Hampshire retirement system. Um, state employees uh, contribute into it, um, municipal employees, uh, employees of village districts, and um, so you know, it's the whole gambit of um, municipal or mm -hmm. um, um, uh, agencies. So uh, other highlights. So in the uh, the park maintenance island line, there's a, and you'll see when we go down through the uh, through the departments, there's um, a large amount of increase there. And that's for a, uh, a planning study for the preservation and restoration of the Island Bridge. So it turns out that the Island Bridge is uh, the last one of its kind in the country and has garnered a lot of attention. Wow. Um, Jeannie has been very involved in championing the, uh, the cause to see what it would take to um, make it whole, if you will. And um, and the study is the first step towards that. Uh, she's also committed to fundraising uh, to raise money um, to offset the 17,000 
And at the same time, uh, I looked back at the capital reserve fund uh, that we have for the island. And uh, and curiously, so the, that capital reserve fund was set up in 2012, I believe. And, uh, and it was specific to a particular project uh, where it talked about a $30,000 cost that would be shared between Northfield and Tilton. So <clears throat> clearly that purpose doesn't uh, exist as it does today. So my suggestion is that the selectmen uh, bring forward a warrant uh, to change the purpose to be more encompassing, uh, particularly if the town is going to own the, the island outright, that uh, that it would apply to both the repairs and maintenance of the island and the bridge, you know, or something to that effect. Uh, in the capital reserve fund currently, as of September 30th, we've got a balance of $62,874. So I think uh, were that to pass, if, if a Warren article is brought forward and were that to pass, then uh, when the operating budget came forward, uh, there'd be a motion to remove the 17,000 from that line. So- um, Do you know what's wrong with the bridge? Uh, uh, John, do you know? Well, as you know, it's not in the bridge. It's, yeah. um, you know, approaching that a lot of it's cast. Um, over the years, we've painted it and we've scraped it and painted it the last, um, I'm trying to think that it might be about 10, 15 years since we painted it or replaced the deck on it. And the problem was, is in order for us to paint it or replace the deck, we had to have both towns agree to pay half of it, yeah. and it would have to be approved by both town meetings. Wasn't getting done. Wasn't getting done. We couldn't get it to that point. So um, now it's at a point where um, it's got rust because it's iron, and there's um, a couple places in the front where the casting is cracked. Oh. on the front on the front post you can visibly see it as well as some of the boards are starting to show their age and in order for us i mean we could throw a coat of paint on it but we're painting over rust we're also there's lead paint stuff like that in it mm. so involved so the idea is to try and get it to um be professionally engineered does do the rivets are they holding out do they need to be replaced um to replace the castings and the strings of what is the proper way to get it back and maintain it and do it and to um, keep it from dis Collapsing. disappearing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, part of the reason for this uh, study is that uh, that can also help us maybe open up some grant possibilities for the actual repairs. So um, there could be some money available that way as well. But generally you need you need to have the the planning of the restoration and preservation proof. The state still has that heritage fund, right? They do, yeah. So anyway, uh, and if Jeannie, I don't know if Jeannie is uh, online. She I is. am. Oh, great. So Jeannie, uh, did we miss anything? No, I think I think John um, <clears throat> did a did a nice job. It is, as you mentioned from the outset, it is the only one of its kind cast in wrought iron in the country. Um, <clears throat> we've got quite a bit of, of attention uh, focused on it. And uh, it was just recently announced as one of the seven to save structures in the state of New Hampshire, which I anticipate will help us raise money to, to uh, decrease that 17,000. I, I, I don't know if you said, um, or not, Tim, that uh, we had had a match for it as well. Um, so. Um, right, I and, hadn't gotten that yeah, far. And we've, yeah, and we've got um, uh, some real experts from around the country who are coming to um, you know, take a look at this. So anyway, uh, so I, I think it's, uh, if that Warren article is brought forward and approved uh, and or the fundraising, I think, you know, we'll be able to reduce this particular line uh, to some degree. And we should, we should know, I would think at that point, uh, you know, by how much at town meeting. Uh, the other items uh, for 2021, we are, we are not planning to purchase a cruiser. The detail fund won't support it right now. We will have paid off our um, most recent cruiser in the third quarter of 21 
And uh, the other item in this budget, uh, you'll see that there's there are no increases for the police union. So uh, while we while it may not be a one for one from year to year because of um, changes in personnel, uh, if there were going to be a collective bargaining agreement brought forward, it'd be in a separate warrant article. Uh, and then also, uh, you may recall in discussions I've had with the with budget committee in prior meetings that um, earlier in the year, uh, as part of the um, uh, conservative concern about our expenses at the end of the year, um, some monies were moved out of uh, some budget lines into what, what we termed a contingency line, basically a holding line so that those monies could not be spent. And, uh, and currently there's $45,134 um, in that particular line. And we are anticipating that um, by the end of the year that we are going to reinstate uh, the encumbrances that we had for the second floor air conditioning of 18,200 and the New Hampshire plan charrette of $6,000. And uh, we're also looking at um, one other item, which uh, if the, uh, the current police building sells, we're looking at uh, moving, which is uh, listed on the market right now, that um, moving the generator from that location here to town hall, which would give us an always on, uh, power uh, for this building. Uh, and uh, it's undetermined when we're uh, looking at quotes for what it would take to move that and install it here. Then on the last on the last page here, you just Sorry, see it. Tim. Sure. You had 20,934 still left out of that contingency line. Is that going to roll over to 21? So uh, it, not in a contingency line itself, it would be uh, moved back uh, and then you, as you'll see when you go through the when we go through the budget, uh, there's some there's some specific things that are taking place right now, particularly in the legal line, where we're probably going to have to add some of that money back into the legal line um, to take care of a, uh, a couple of uh, ongoing issues. So, um, so I don't anticipate there'll be any budget left in that. We will move it back into the the budget lines and whatever is left of that will flow to the bottom line to the unassigned fund balance. Um, and uh, and I, I do think there will be some. Uh, okay. where, mm -hmm. We get encumbrances at 24,000. So but right, there's contingencies at 45. Right. So the the air conditioning for this. So essentially uh, what we what we stopped at the beginning of the year uh, we're reinstating for the air conditioning and the uh, plan charrette. It's unlikely the work would be done at this point in time, so they'd have to be encumbered into 21. Okay. Yeah. So really, that's what that's referring to. And then uh, the probably about three quarters of the remainder will go into the uh, legal line. What is the charrette? Cool. Uh, Jeannie, would you care to comment on the charrette? Sure. So. <clears throat> The sh a charrette is, um, Plan New Hampshire charrette is basically you have a group of professionals, architects, civil engineers. Uh, you typically get somebody from the Department of, um, ah. <laughs> who, who is it who does our roads? Yeah. The Department of Transportation. Thank you. So you'll have a group of professionals come into the town of Tilton and meet with members of the community to uh, talk about um, everything from roads and bridges and um, improvements to the roadway, to pathways, um, to making it a more walkable and livable community. This came out of a meeting, if you recall, Bill um, Lawrence yeah. was at that meeting. I think John Scanlon, you were at that meeting. Um, Leanne and myself, uh, we did meet with the folks from Plan New Hampshire. So essentially, it's it's a way to make improvements or, or create a plan for downtown. And um, it got delayed, as Tim said, because of COVID. And in fact, today I was just communicating with the Tilton School to see about 
rescheduling it for next spring. So at the end of all this, you would have a plan that the town could, that the town's people, uh, the town fathers um, could work on and embrace and then have a plan going forward to make these improvements for downtown Tilton. Great. Thank yeah, you. Sounds good. Thanks. Well, just on that, the uh, island cap reserve, was that money in there for repair the stones around the island originally? Well, the the Warren article, um, I, I think the simple answer is yes. Um, the Warren article talked about a, uh, and the minutes pertaining to the Warren article talked about a $30,000 engineering project. And uh, and I, uh, Norm Boudreau was the one speaking about it, and I believe it was pertaining to the erosion and uh, you know helping us stop the erosion. Uh, that was, the, that was the, yeah, I was pretty involved in that. And one of the things we in back in the day we could have uh, Kenny Partridge drive his front end loader with a bucket in, hitch up a chain, yeah. and the rocks stack them back up, mm -hmm. and that would last for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had some washouts and it wasn't long after that and, um, we had last done that some of the rules changed you can't just drive a um, back look, a loader into the river and <laughs> lift the rocks and put them back up um, you need an engineering study on how it will be done and include mm -hmm. on that they don't want you to just put them back up they want footings so now you have to have just like a real plan where you would have footings around an engineering floor as for um because it's in a wet or in a river. Well, it would make sense. You want some kind of permanency. Permit you would, yeah. You know? And they want to make sure that you're not filling in the river damage and you're sending stuff further downstream. So the, the problem was is that we put money into it that um we couldn't we couldn't do anything on the island unless we had Northfield pay for half. Mm -hmm. So we made a Warren article and we put money in there to set aside for engineering, fee, engineering fees and everything for you know, saving and preserving the island and, and all that. But um, we, we kept trying in Northfield to not contribute 50% mm -hmm. of that. So it kind of just sat there and this day we have rocks in the river and um we can't move forward but we're very shortly going to be able to um proceed on our own and apply for grants and such great can i could i mention could i jump in here for a minute since you on this topic uh -huh. if that's appropriate sure <laughs> so to to john's point the selectmen have been uh working on taking control of the island. And in fact, I um, had a conversation with um, Randy Pelletier, who I know Catherine and John probably both know from the DES, about what is it that the town of Tilton could do to restore the island and protect it from further erosion. <clears throat> he has recommended a hydrogeologist out of Littleton, New Hampshire. Um, and I've been in contact with this gentleman who's going to come down and take a look at the island and the erosion and uh, be able to tell the board, um, makes a suggestion on what could be done uh, to further protect the island and restore uh, what has has eroded. So it, that is in process and all with the idea at some point that the island's going to be in under the full control of the town of Tilton. Great, thank you, Jean. Okay, so uh, if you take a look at your, um, the budget itself on the very first page, I'll just go through uh, some of the highlights in a little more detail. So the, uh, what you're looking at here, all the expenses under 2020, these are uh, updated through today. And, uh, and I think uh, if you heard in the very beginning, uh, the merit increases that the Board of Selectmen had uh, distributed, those have been updated in here as well for the salaries. And, um, and then, uh, uh, and there have been a few change, a few minor changes in the budget since 
the selectmen saw this last week and uh, I'll review those. But essentially in the administrative budget, uh, we're, we uh, were fortunate to have a decrease in our uh, workers' comp insurance, which helped a great deal uh, keeping down the increase in that department. Uh, we also have, um, we do have some monies uh, that we've uh, put in for maintenance and repair for town hall. Still, we're only up 0.3% uh, in the town clerk tax collector's budget. And in the administrative, administrative budget as well, there are reductions for the election and registration components. So as you know, in 2020, we've had four elections at a pretty significant cost. In 2021, there's one election. So uh, both of those budgets benefited from uh, the reduction in elections, as you'll see when we go through them. In finance, the reduction is largely due to the interest that's paid on the construction loan for the building. So we have a short-term construction loan. DRA requires that uh, any interest payments made on that have to be budgeted within the operating budget. And as part of the Warren article last year, that money was moved into this uh, short-term interest line. For 2021, that comes out in its entirety. Uh, and then in the long-term debt, uh, what you see there is the net effect of, um, of the 110,000 going in for the interest only for 2021. That number is definitely going to change uh, once we have a firm number on the building cost and uh, the selectmen decide on how they want to proceed, whether it's New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank or a local bank. Uh, the good news is that uh, in the bond market, at least today, uh, the yields were coming down, the bonds were on a tear up, so um, so that bodes well for us. And it also seems as though there there is um, continuing uh, concern about employment and the economy, and more than likely the Federal Reserve is going to continue to keep rates uh, at very historically low. Uh, numbers. In IT, uh, the, the majority of that increase or about half of that increase is due to uh, software and the other half is due to the, uh, the fiber uh, inclusion at the PD and also Town Hall, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, land use, uh, this is uh, the this increase is uh, partly due to an increase in hours for the land use technician, and also uh, adding in alternates for the planning and zoning board. In the police budget, uh, as you'll see, uh, the majority of this number, the $145,000 increase, uh, that is going back to the utilities and also New Hampshire retirement and the additional costs that they have. Plus, um, keep in mind, we have uh, we do have a full-time officer that was put on in 2020. And, and, and I believe there was, um, I'd have to go back and look if it was uh, the entire year of 2020, but this was a um, full complement in the police department. In public works, we added a full-time employee, but because of other reductions, uh, we're only seeing a $19,600 increase, so which is really remarkable on the public works director's part. Uh, he reduced his overtime by $6,000 today. He's also reduced his salt and sand by $10,000 because of uh, the new roadbeds that he has in town uh, between Caleb Hill Road, uh, Cedar Street, Linden Highland, uh, where he believes that those are going to require less salt material, so he's able to reduce his um, his budget uh, for that. In sanitation, uh, these are contract increases with Pennard. Uh, we are looking uh, at 2022 for either um, taking that in-house, uh, reconfiguring how we do uh, sanitation, or um, or going out to bid with a new vendor. So we've been uh, years ago, we did some work on what it would cost to do this in-house, but we really didn't have the uh, the staff or the management in place to uh, to do that. 
Uh, we feel as though we're much better prepared at this point, uh, but there's still some significant costs associated with taking that all in-house. It is, the sanitation contract is our single largest contract townwide. And, um, and this is coming to an end of a five-year contract at the end of next year. In health and welfare, uh, the majority of this is increased uh, general assistance line. Um, the human services director, Heather, is taking it up from 20,000 up to 25,000. Uh, she's getting close to spending her full amount this year, as you'll see when we go through it. And uh, just depends on what November and December uh, shows, but, uh, but she believes that uh, she's gonna have increased costs next year and has uh, increased that as a result. In culture and recreation, $17,000 of this increase is that, uh, that study for the Island Bridge. And the remaining 1,600, uh, I have to look to see exactly. And then the outside agencies, these were all the requests uh, that were submitted. As you can see on the far right-hand column here, uh, where the budget committee has voted on a few things, I started to tally those up. So as we go through, uh, and uh, if if you'd like um, to go through detail in detail, uh, line by line, we can do that. If there's something that that jumps out at you uh, as we go through the administrative budget or any of these budgets, uh, I'm happy to go through line by line, or or just uh, if you want to take a look and have questions, whatever you would prefer. Would uh, people rather look at take this home yeah. and look it over and and then come back with questions? I yeah. think that would be more sure. yeah. easier for everybody. And uh, if you recall, in in the past, we've <laughs> included uh, notes and that sort of thing with the lines, and we will we will have that at some point. We're still you know working on some of those, but the bottom line is um, this is this is what the department heads have requested. Um, and, uh, and you know the main drivers of this budget being the, the new building and retirement. And if you really strip those items away and you look at, look at everything else, the budget really isn't up very much, um, considering we've added a full-time employee. Did the town receive any assistance for the COVID at all? We EDP did. And we did, so grants? yeah, we, in fact, we had, um, we had applied for uh, everything we could, um, and we received uh, $86,800, I believe it was. And, under which one? Uh, that's under the CARES Act. That was under CARES. Like PPP or? Uh, no, it's, ones under the CARES. It's, uh, it's a different thing for municipalities. Uh, so it was, it was part of a state program where the state determined what uh, each town uh, would be allowed to apply for up to, but you had to prove your expenses uh, in those areas. And uh, at, at the criteria changed a number of times during this program, but they were basically three times when you could apply. And uh, and when they first set it out, it was very time consuming. You know, every little um, you know every little receipt for three dollars and sixteen cents, and so on and so forth. And uh, as time went on. And I think every municipality was already under pressure because we're have, all having to work differently and uh, deal with the issues of some people being out, some people being remote, you know, sort of having to figure everything out as we went. And, um, and I think the state was seeing that, uh, that there was less participation and uh, less money being drawn down on these. So uh, the criteria was changed several times to the point where it made it much easier to apply for and be approved for the amount of money. So we did receive every last dollar that we were entitled to with that. In addition, um, I believe the town clerk tax collector uh, had also um, applied for money uh, through, um, through a separate election um, amount. I, I don't know that we received money on that as yet, and I don't know that, uh, that uh, you know, what we applied for will qualify. I do know that we did get a lot of free things um, that we didn't have to pay for, and that was due to the town clerk's tax collector requesting things. So that like may have been, what? Um, all sorts of PPE 
So uh, masks. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Uh, masks. Yeah, okay. Is that from the state, right? Masks. Yeah. 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 yeah, we had a lot of stuff at the election. All kind, all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. things that um, that she was able to get um, through her office. And so every chance that we had to take advantage of, whether it was uh, in-kind material or money, we did. So where was the 86,800 used because we only got to move 45,000 in contingency? Sure, so so uh, keep in mind, this is the appropriation budget. So oh, uh, big oh, I can't so, okay. so we were, able, we were able to, well, um, the, the reality is we were able to absorb the costs that we had um, by implementing things for COVID because our public works director made uh, made things for downstairs, um, you know, very frugally. He, he was able to, um, you know, fashion things and make things to protect uh, the employees in the town clerk tax collector area. Um, he made, um, you know, other, um, gosh, I can't think of all the things that he did, but he did a number of things that where he was crafting things to uh, that we didn't have to go out and buy at, at full cost. Uh, we did buy a, um, a, a fogger, if you will, a hygiene fogger. So there's a solution and there's a public works employee that comes through daily and uh, sprays the common areas of town hall. And, um, uh, but that's absorbed in this budget. That's under equipment purchase in the administrative budget. So as you look through this, you're not going to see anywhere where there's a huge balloon in any one area. We were basically able to manage our COVID costs within our municipal budget. Uh, if that's being absorbed, but you use this money for this fogger, why are we absorbing it in the budget? So because uh, we have to show the expense. Uh, so it 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 uh, uh, the eighty six thousand dollars will go right to our unassigned fund balance. Unassigned fund balance. For right. 2021 or is it no, no, 2020? For, for this year, yeah. Okay. Yep, for this year. So, um, do we have like an itemized thing or something showing what we've spent that money on? Well, so that's what I'm saying is, is that, be, that we, we were able we were able to absorb the costs within our municipal budget. So we made changes within the budget. We uh, we were very frugal. Um, none of us wanted to spend more than we had to. Um, you know, so by working with the Board of Selectmen, uh, Jeannie and and I, you know, worked it out so that we didn't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, we were able to absorb it, like I said, within this, you know, the appropriation that we had at the beginning of the year, so that the money, we're still entitled to the money that we applied for, but that money coming in goes directly to our unassigned fund balance. So that will be like a re revenue source. Yes. Yeah. So on the revenue sheet, that will, it, will be seeing eighty-six thousand. It's not directly considered a revenue because of the way DRA looks at it, but uh -huh. it goes to our unassigned fund balance. So in okay. effect, it, there will it, be a note. Treated like a note so yeah. how yeah. will we see it in the budget? You won't. So <laughs> see, that's why I'm it's too yeah. generic so when it, you're it, saying everything's so being absorbed. It doesn't work. So our fund, no, our fund balance goes up by mm -hmm. that eighty-six thousand. Is what I'm. What I'm saying for that money, the the costs that are in here, um, uh, I mean, I can point to s some of them that I uh, that I know for a fact. But you'll see in some of the miscellaneous lines that are overspent, uh, the equipment purchase line that's overspent, uh, things of that sort. Those were all due to um, purchases that we had to make for COVID. Uh, material lines, we bought materials uh, that Public Works used to make things with. So you showed the expense. But it's offset by this money coming in. Uh, yeah. So, so you couldn't put, make a note note over no. here that this is COVID. COVID. I can certainly I can certainly put notes in there. Yeah, but I want to see it offset. I mean, you're showing all the expenses. I'm wondering where this money went, and it's I don't hard think, to well, see it being. Understood I don't know what it went for. Fund balances. I don't. Well, I, I, so I, I. So you're saying there was money? additional expenses because of COVID, and this money took care of that. So, so this is where it gets a little tricky yeah. because uh, towns were eligible up to a certain amount of money. <laughs> we were, uh, the state eventually let the town use payroll, uh, payroll expenses that we've already budgeted for and are in our budget uh, mm -hmm. as proof that we had um, expense that, uh, that allowed us to get our money. So 
so we had a we had a number of other small things, um, technology that we had to buy, you know, things you know that we had to do for go to meeting, uh, the monthly charges for that, um, materials, uh, as I said before, that public works used to build things downstairs, uh, the hygiene sprayer, um, and then uh, you know a lot of um, a lot of uh, hand soap and and things of that sort, but uh, that didn't amount to eighty six thousand dollars by any stretch. Right. But the state uh, permitted municipalities because they got this this uh, chunk of money uh, allotted to them for the state of New Hampshire from the federal government. This money then was uh, divvied up. So each town could apply up to a certain amount of money, and in the end, the the, the justification for that was something that we already had budgeted. So in other words, um, uh, let's say uh, it was first responders and also health officer and any kind of payroll related to uh, someone that might come, come in contact with or be working in that COVID area. Right, but you see what I'm saying, you're saying it's already budgeted, we already put that in our budget, it's already expensed. This is extra money, and it's going into an unassigned account, which I don't know what you're doing with that. No, so, so well, this is a little more. Yeah, this is what's happening crazy. with all the other. Like, what, this is happening with the other outside agencies well, that they're getting money, but they're not sh reflecting it. That's why. So I'm we like, don't know. Did, was it, it should be reflected payroll? somewhere. What was Let me reflect it for a second. Sure. So if Tim was planning on buying new computers for the the town, but that was already budgeted. And it was budgeted, and then well. We're going to buy them, but part of the reason having it is because everybody has to have separate new computers or something. So it's actually a COVID expense, but we were we already budgeted to buy them, but now it's it can be it utilized because we all have to have separate things to look at. Something like that. Yeah. So we understand that, but we want to we want to see yeah, where it's reflected yeah. on in the actual budget. I know it's budgeted there, but you need to, need to make a note well, saying COVID took care of it. If it's already budgeted, our budget should have been reduced by this amount, but it's not. So I, it's not because I understand that it's budgeted. I know the distinction. It's, it's, it's because it, it, that's not technically it doesn't change our appropriation. So our appropriation is still the 5.209 million is our is our town appropriation. So uh, so that money and I can show it on the revenue sheet if you want to see it on the revenue sheet. It's just that when when we go to tax rate setting time, DRA does not consider that revenue. Right, but for us as a budget, we know that's there. Other things yeah. can get reduced because we got some money and where's this unassigned fund? So the Who gets fund, all this unassigned fund? So the fund balance is basically our, our net worth uh, for the town and every year um, you know I think right now it's about seven hundred thousand uh, dollars San Martin has a two million dollar fund balance and the idea behind a fund balance is that if if you run into a real problem let's say we have a bridge washout or or um, there's some crisis that that isn't covered by insurance and that uh, you know a, some boiler blows up what's that the boiler blows up right a boiler blows up or, or you know mm -hmm. some such thing that that uh, the, the fund balance gives you money that you can use um, by you know applying for that to say we want to use some of our fund balance and, and here's why very simply put but uh, where it's used most often is at the end of the year in tax rate setting so um, so normally if our re let's say our revenues are uh, three million dollars our expenses are two million dollars that $1 million, uh, there's no profit for the town that goes to our fund balance. And then the, sec the selectman can say, you know what, we want to return that $1 million to the taxpayers. So we're going we're gonna to use that at tax rate setting time to, um, to reduce our tax burden. And that's what we've done each and every year. Um, it's, it's varied from 175,000, I think in the higher years to as low as $75,000, but, um, I'm trying to think, uh, and there may have been a year where we didn't use any. Uh, it just depends uh, on what the other components of our tax rate are. Because our goal has always been to try to have a steady tax rate, no spikes. So the fund balance helps take some of that out if there's an anomaly from one year to the next. So, so essentially, this money uh, it's not it's not lost. 
it's not uh, it's not been spent savings it's not been spent that's exactly what it is and it can be used um, it can so it, this is a 5.2 increase how do I know that's going to be we're going to use some to reduce this tax rate well it's it's only uh, the supplement have control of this on a sign and this extra money that's right yeah, yeah. That's right, but that's uh, that's not our not doing. For the that's, taxpayers. <laughs> that's not our doing. That's DRA's uh, rules and the state's um, method of, of doing it. Um, sure. But I can I can show minimum amounts based on our budget what we should always have mm -hmm. in there. And that's correct, and, no. and you should always have at least five percent. Um, we're always on the lower end of things because uh, we run we run a very lean budget. Uh, you know, last year, I think we were up 0.2%. Um, you know, it's usually very, very low uh, change from year to year. Um, there's only been a couple of times where we've seen, seen a significant increase. And uh, when we've added a group, um, say when we added dispatch, we saw an increase. Um, now we're adding the building, we're gonna see an increase. Um, so are you saying when we got this money, DRA regulates what you have to use it for? Because uh, I, can't, I can't see that we got extra money and we're increasing things. Why isn't this going to go to this retirement increase or this or that or whatever? So, uh, kind of not fair. So, well, um, so the selectmen could, you know, at the end of next year, they could say, you know, we want to take some of the bite out of this budget. Uh, I definitely think that if our building sells uh, before the end of next year yeah. and we have X amount of money available, that would also be going to the, you know, the bottom line to the unassigned fund balance. Um, and that plus this other CARES money, any of that could be used to offset the tax rate. They'll be able to use that CARES money this year to offset the tax rate if they so choose. So for 2020. Um, okay. So, so we're waiting right now. 2021. What's that? 2020 and not 2021. Well, well, it depends on. We haven't seen uh, things are behind uh, with some of the uh, the village district, and I think uh, we were waiting on um, Department of Education at one point for the school. And then we still don't. We're still not ready to set our tax rate, although we've had everything in. Um, so it's just it is uh, just a matter of how you know we we budget the gross expenses of what those are going to be, and then our revenues you know offset that at tax rate setting time, and then the unassigned fund balance the board of selectmen can you know authorize the use of that. I know uh, we see our revenues. Income. Do we ever do we do we look at the our all the balances we have here? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we do yeah, get that. I provide those. I can't to you. remember. I remember seeing the re revenues. Yeah. What are yeah. our bank balances? Quarterly. Uh, well, I can I can give you the bank balances at any point in time, but they they fluctuate wildly. Uh, and this time of year, they're uh, next to nil. Uh, so we go. Uh, and I can, if you'd like, sometime I can take you through the cash flow analysis that I do. Okay. But um, but I try to keep you know, very low balances uh, so that we're not borrowing anything more than we have to during the year. Uh, well, I just wanted to put it on record that I brought it up because we are attacking everybody else and they all got free money and they're gonna say, well, what what did we do for it? So that's why we need to, you know, be somewhat transparent because we're doing it to them. So. It sounds like you got this money categorized somewhere already. Well, some of it, a, I little, mean, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, no, I, if we're going to get it all, well, we, if we're going to get it all, it has to be um, somehow, you know, um, drawn out of something. So that's what I'm saying is that it could be just notated somewhere that this is going to fund balance. Yes. Yeah. And, you know? and yeah, and you will see, um, I'll, I'll be happy to, you know, uh, give you that sort of thing Little break down the road once we have our tax rate set and, but it'd be uh, nice if it could be used to you know this is going to be an increase if we don't use any of it to have a tax break well for 20 to the for 21 certainly absolutely yeah yep. uh, i think it's uh, we'll see yep the um it sounds like only the select one have that choice so well, it's not going to help our budget meeting, huh? yeah that tells you about you, you know, about yeah yeah no i understand how much, yeah. how much we you know use from the other side of the balance and uh i can tell you it's always very frugally used and a lot of debate over it because you yeah. know you don't want to 
go too low too thin, in case yeah. something bad did happen. You wouldn't right, have but this it. is extra is what and I'm saying. It well, affects our, well, um, we actually, well, what's happening is that all the money that's come from the government is assigned somewhere. No, I went to the unassigned fund. No, no, no. But the the only way it can go to that is that, it has, already, is yes. that it's appropriated to something that, that you said expense, it was going to yeah. go to, even though we already budgeted. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you're replacing that it. you're replacing yeah. that budgeted money with this free money. Not mm -hmm. really. Oh. You, well, they just use that to show the expense well, for the to. thing, but <laughs> no. the money's still there, and it was it didn't pay those a lot of those expenses we already had in the budget. It wasn't raised right. in appropriated monies. It was that's correct. Think at the end of the year, we raise an appropriate X amount of dollars, and then the selectmen, you know, spend the monies on what they're supposed to with their budget. Well, sometimes they underspend that budget. In fact, most often they do. That un unspent money doesn't disappear. It goes in the end reserve fund right. balance. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then the only way to get it out of there are it's very limited. The selectmen can use it to offset taxes. That's right. If there's an emergency, they apply to the Department of Revenue Administration and yeah. say, like, I'm going to overspend my budget. Well, if you're going to overspend the budget, the only place you can get money is in that unreserved fund balance. And I think the only and other they can take it out. The only other ways you can uh, spend that if you overspend your budget are uh, either through welfare or through uh, a has legal to, judgment. Has to be if emergency. You a, if you have a judgment against you, um, you know, you can access it that way. But in any case, um, hmm. but what you should take away from this is that that uh, the management of the town worked very hard to make sure that we didn't go hog wild because all this money was coming in and, and spend hand over fist. I understand that. We were very frugal. We managed to spend within our existing budget, even for the additional expenses, by you know really reevaluating everything. So there was a, a lot of a lot of hard work put into it to really try to. Um, you know, save that in case we needed that, you know, later on. Well, because that's what I was who saying. Knows, yeah. Right. Who knows what's going to happen at the end of the year? You know, we didn't know then. Um, you know, we're in much better shape now, but what's it going to be like in six months? We don't know. Right. So, um, so that's why uh, I think that's really the the takeaway from that. And, and, uh, and unfortunately, the, just the, the way uh, I used to call it municipal math, Christine, because it used to drive me crazy mm -hmm. um, the way things work in government. But uh, it makes more sense to me now. I still don't like it because it's it, it's almost a backward way of looking at right, things. That's why I'm in math. And that's why I'm like, we didn't add to mm -hmm. the budget. We still spent. We take it out of the budget. This is all this is extra to me because we didn't go outside the budget. Right. And to me, extra means reduce the tax rate for this next term and and we don't have a say really in just a well the selectmen do yeah and and keep in mind they're they're paying the same tax rate you are oh yeah, yeah. so um so i don't think they want to have anything higher than than they have to either but um so this is a increase of 5.2 percent you said right right yeah so and, and i like that well, <laughs> so, that's our job is to reduce it as much as we can. Okay. Any oh. other place the selectman will use any unassigned fund balances to try and kick that down. Sure. You know, so that there won't be a, an impact in it. I guess. I, but how I mean, do we know My that? question was that well, you, you're because you the rate the keeps, keeps good artificially it, reducing uh, the tax And it rate. is in the budget. Okay. It is right there in the. I guess you, you can pull up um, last year's annual. And yeah. you can take a look there. So yeah, and uh, and uh, I don't have the right. unassigned fund balance on, or maybe I do on the um, quarterly. I, I send out to the budget committee the uh, the balances and all the capital reserve funds and things like that. The uh, I mean I can include the bank balances, but you're gonna you're gonna see from one month to another or a quarter to another. Right, when certain they, payments are they due, just, and they yeah. just you know are like this. Um, and um, um, but in any event, um, but I guess my question was when you receive government money, is there any kind of form that you have to fill out on how it was used? They don't ask for anyone? Yeah, no, well, uh, so we, <laughs> we had to use uh, the criteria to justify the amount. That's what I'm talking yes. asking for, yes. basically. But that's yeah. already so in the payroll. budget. Well, yeah. no, I know, yeah. but I just like to see where, how you justify it. That's so, it, well, I can tell you right now, it was uh, it was health officer and and police officer payroll. 
and we have okay. more than enough to <laughs> be able to spend eight hundred dollars. Right. Okay, great. So great. that was that was uh, our justification. Great. So great. in any event, uh, just keep in mind, you know, the the drivers being the building, you know, it was approved at last last town meeting. This would be a lot worse if we had a full year payment in for 2021. Okay, you're frightening me. So, uh, but we're going to in 2022, right? In 2022. So, so that's going to hurt. Well, the idea here is to to you know sort of step into that and um, you know and hopefully uh, hopefully at that time maybe we'll see a lot of savings in utility costs. Everything in the building is LED. Okay. You know all that. That does of, save actually. Well, you know. Uh, everything, I did my in our, house. everything in our current building is also, I think, LED now with few exceptions. Um, but um, anyway, if there's if there's nothing else, that's uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I have a question. Did you send out in the last quarter, which was at end of September, um, yes. the um, what was in all the reserve funds? Uh, I, if I didn't, I will. But uh, I typically send that out quarterly. Yeah. I don't remember. Yep. If you did, I'd go hunting for it. Uh, I may, I, it may have been uh, the last, uh, it may have been a, uh, July that I sent it out. Okay. I'll have to look, you know, half year. I'd like um, to see it. I suspect but yeah, no, the members would. Yeah, I, I generally, uh, generally that's the last page that you get, um, yeah. you know, in that report. It shows the different capital reserve funds. Perhaps you could include the unreserved fund. Uh, be happy. I was, <laughs> I, I can't remember if it's on there or not, but if it's not, I will add it. It will not change uh, during the year, so it's going to be our, uh, you know, we'll we'll show our audited fund balance, and then, um, you know, I can note other items that will contribute to it. Do you know that that total also includes assets, not oh, cash money? So yeah, money. no, it's uh, it, yeah, it is not cash sitting in a bank. That's right. It is um, our assets less our liabilities. It's essentially, like I said earlier, sure. uh, kind of a a net worth, if you will. It includes everything from uh, roads and um, so buildings, to me, it's uh, infrastructure, <laughs> everything. Yeah. So, um, so it's it's uh, it's you know I have this conversation with one of the selectmen every year because uh, they look at it, wow, it's a lot of cash. So mm -hmm. It's not cash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, eight, 2018 was three million three hundred and fifty-eight thousand. Uh, not our fund balance. No, our uh, our um, assets. Oh. assets. Uh, That's a probably a combination. Then you minus liabilities. Well, our assets are a lot higher than that. Um, and then we go to. Are you looking at the um, the, the balance sheet from the? This is um, five thirty-five. MS five thirty-five. Okay. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, Two thousand eighteen. Yeah, it's it's um, much higher than three million. I can tell you that, but um, uh, you might be looking at uh, current assets, current liabilities. That could be. I just want to ask if there's any public out there that has a question for Tim. Hearing none, I think you're good, Tim. Thank you. Okay, thank great. You for your All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for coming in, Tim. And Christine, anytime Sorry. you want to come down, <laughs> no. you and I in my office, come on. I'll, I'll show you it all. It will all make sense. I'll show you the municipal map. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Excellent report, Tim. Thank right. you. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to discussion about the uh, outside agencies. I kind of made a little chart, and I'm not sure how accurate it is, but um, I'm sorry, I don't have any copy, so just my scratching here. But I did go on into um, looking at um, COVID monies that were given to a lot of these local agencies, and I think it was a uh, on one website that that had a range of what they were receiving. And uh, I'm not sure if we. It was published material. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. ProPublica, I think, oh. had it. Anything uh, over 150,000. Right? If it, yeah. yeah, I guess it's 
over a certain amount or something. Yeah. I mean, I know New Beginnings, I think they had. Uh, Do we want to just look feet. at one at a time? Sure. You tell me New Beginnings because I, I if you tell down, them all. <laughs> I went down this list. Uh, I think they had 63,000. Um, and then I, on their statement, they had 200,000, I think, in the federal loans. Yeah, there's so many different ones. There was state level, there was right. federal level. So I don't know what that website would show. I'd, I guess I'd have to look at it. So, I mean, what to me seems to be this is extra money. I couldn't really, I didn't see that there was a lot of expenses to extra expenses this year to them. Most of the, it seemed like their revenue was down. But in a lot of cases, their expenses were down too. Well, they'll probably say COVID expenses. However, the state gave away, like we know here, a lot of free stuff. A, any company could apply to the state, including mm -hmm. lawyers and whatnot, to get masks and gloves and sanitizer. Right. But. So I don't know, did anybody else research this? That the, uh, what was given to uh, the different. Agencies. I didn't know you could find that. I didn't know it was yeah. public information. I just Googled said, you know, what was COVID monies to. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So the new beginnings, I believe, in their report, I think they had like they had 200,000 for federal. And I don't know if that's a normal grant or. Um, All right, let's see what we got in here. Yeah. New beginnings. Yeah, so. So their 19 to 20, just their operating account went from 37,000 to 201,000. So that's probably where they sat is the operating account. Okay, yeah. My question on the COVID uh, funding is, is it something they have to pay back or is that just something they get and don't have to pay back? <clears throat> well, under 50,000 is going to be automatically. Uh, forgiven everybody over that has to apply for forgiveness but the statistics are saying that i don't want to say not everybody everybody won't have to pay it back but if they misused it or they didn't keep their employees uh at their full-time rates that they applied for they will have to pay some of that back and then i know some of the sba grants and loans were based on tax returns and such. If that shows a significant difference, then they will request something back there. Did anybody write down what New Beginnings told us they got? Uh, I thought I wrote but was I here that time? <laughs> would it be on the minutes? So they were. They're the first ones, I think. Oh, might be the one. I think I missed the first one. I mean, they're not yeah, liquid they're... assets certainly jumped from June 30th, 2019 to June 30th, 2020. What was that, Catherine? They're, they've got a balance sheet here that shows their liquid assets. So their operations checking account was 37361 yeah. last year. Yeah, same like it, time this year went up to two hundred and one thousand. Yep, fifty-four. Right, I think that's, that's what I, what I said. Saying. They sat the money. I'm wondering. Uh, Sean Foster said they did receive PPE loan. They didn't say how much. As well as some state and federal funds. It's not on the minutes. Okay, so they did get state and federal also. Yeah. 
Okay, so. Um, and what you so saw, what we have to, 63,000. What's that? You said you saw 63,000. Yes, yeah. Did you come back with the information? Because then I was asking if the dates didn't seem to line up on the. Uh, Okay, yes, yeah, so that had to be wrong as of June 30th, 2018 balance sheet. That's June 30th, 2020 balance sheet. Mm. So I did uh, the other ones, uh, Frank and VA got $150,000 to $350,000. That, that was a uh, um, listed that they had something. And I think actually they told us mm. they got. Um, I thought they said they had 482,000. Uh, that's what they told well, us. Well, they're, uh, they're probably because they fall in the medical yeah, yeah. facility. Mm -hmm. But anybody, I know that some of the money was extra money they actually had to spend. Anybody on the front lines got for quite some time during the height of COVID, uh, $600 the six hundred dollars or three hundred dollars every pay period, um, extra on top of their pay for staying working because it was right. hard to keep medical staff. So some of that did get spent if they're in the medical field. Mm -hmm. um, I think the uh, Lake Shuja Mental Health got one point six million. Hmm. Well, we Cap we voted on them five hundred anyway. Yeah. Cap got one to two million. Waypoint got one to two million. Waypoint. One They're two asking million. for three thousand. Okay. Anybody else was on the list? That's all I found. Besides, I think Casa I couldn't find. Maybe they didn't get enough out of that. That's why I'm thinking where you were was some kind of specific. Was it just better or was it stay with? It probably was a specific category. Yeah. Um, it could be just federal funds. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, there was some kind of typo or something that you had a question about or something. Well, yeah, it was on some of the dates. On new beginnings. So on the this one shows the federal budget was. 260,902 and they're proposing 478085 as federal grants and donations. I'm wondering if they, because their fiscal year was June, thir June. I wonder if that is in, the, all those loans are in this next fund. And state was up 16,000. Who, who, who are you talking about now? Or? This is way point there. No. What? Are you speaking about new beginnings? Yes. Okay, it's on, uh, it says profit and loss budget versus actual July 19th through June 2020. But then they show the proposed for 2021. I'm trying to figure out if their funds fell in when they got the funds. Oh, I'm trying to think. This was started in March, right? Were they one one of the ones, I don't know if I was here, but that said they didn't show it on any of these reports? Um, no, well, she, uh, I'm not sure if she mentioned that. Uh, Did that show Dick was in, in, present and we know it was asked? Yeah, yeah. Looks like they also have a big increase for 21 for transitional housing. It was zero, now it's 114,000.
I mean, they asked for what, 1575? I'm sure they don't need it. <laughs> right, and they really only asked for 15,000 from the whole, all the towns together. Yeah, 1575. Yes. Not 15,000. <laughs> From about 10 towns, they asked, you know, 1,500 each. So. Yeah, Samberton, I said, they said no, I think, and Barnstead? So I'm just trying to think that if no a, Barnstead, a lot of these Samberton. larger uh, agencies are getting a lot of money, it's really, we could save that much, you know, not give them a, a dollar or something. But right, to keep that, to so keep they them, get the letter. Right, right. But um, it seems to me that New Beginnings, Franklin DNA, um, Lake Shoes Mental Health, um, CAP, and Waypoint, really, for what we give them, um, I'm not seeing that their expenses are warranting our small amount when they've received a large amount from the from the government. Yeah. If people want to review that, I mean, I'm not real good with these charts. I'm trying to go through to see from what last year to the, this year, if there's much difference. Yeah, I, I um, mean, I'm, I feel- I mean, these are on these are different times though. You gotta remember everyone's getting funding for COVID. It's not a normal budget year for us. Think about it. Right, exactly. It, it's just like it's our chance to save is what I think. Well, it is. just like they're they are actually benefiting from the government funds. We need to do that too, especially in these. Yes, and I I agree about that, Christine, about trying to save some money. But I just concerned, you know, if these people have to pay money back. I mean, that's why I asked you earlier about the uh, you know what the limit was and whatnot. So, right, we would have to ask them. <laughs> It doesn't, Most of them. it doesn't cut the, let's say for the PPP, I think it's September 21, is if they have any that they have to pay back, that's when they start making payments. We would be at the end of the budget year and they could present that for the 2022. Mm -hmm. um, but most of it, like I, I can say, honestly, I get so many news releases from IRS and all these, you know, SBA and everything like that, that because of the situation, it's more favorable that they're going to be forgiven for almost everything, except for if they appropriated incorrectly and got way too much money than what they, like, let's say a small business person had to show their uh, income and expenses. If they undercut that and then they file their return, they're going to see it and they'll have to pay some back. So it's like fraudulent lies and. Or if um, they decide to expand another to another part right, of their so business. They got two businesses, yeah. It it became a loan, which is what it originally was, and, and, so that, and they could pay it back as an investment. And it's an extremely low rate. But if they were using it for rate. salaries, then for most part, I believe it was forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it isn't yet. They haven't yeah. finalized. They're doing it in small groups. Okay. Um, even the 50,000 people have not, some of them haven't had, had their turn to file the forgiveness thing. Everybody gets a turn, so to speak, because it's just too overwhelming for them. <coughs> and just getting these extra monies somewhat disturbing that they hid it from us in, and from their budgets so they can keep it and then still get money from us when we're having a hard time too. So. So um, any other thoughts on this? I'll make a motion that we not fund new beginnings this year. To zero or $1? Zero. For new beginnings. Is there a second? I'd second that. Okay. Um, they're a statewide agency. Is mm -hmm. that what they said to us? Yeah, they're big. And they're only asking for 15 something. It's like 
Right. 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 Yeah. They don't pennies. I think it's time for us to save our taxpayers some money. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Yeah. Dawson, yes. Catherine Dawson, yeah. Bill Lawrence, yes. Dembitsky, yes. Skelton, yes. Ted? Ted, no. Okay. It passes four to one. Now, how about uh, Franklin VNA? They're asking for $12,572. And that's what they typically ask for. Right. Um, they usually get about 28,000 from the local communities. We're one of the biggest. My only concern is they're in the medical and they would have had no choice but to spend some of theirs. So I just want to look at what we discussed when they were here. Uh -huh. They seem to be pretty unclear from what I remember as to. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest problems is uh, retaining people to. Right, and, right. Uh, pain. Tough, yeah. You know, in some ways they didn't have um, the expenditures. That's on the 14th. Too. They got COVID tests for free from the state. I tried to do percentages and only from what I see here, we're like 42%. I don't know if that's a per their budget or it can't be the budget. Oh, no, Tilton, 18%. Um, they, there is a note. I have a note that they did get, the frontline people did get the 600 and 300. They have 32 staff members. I'm just reading my notes. <laughs> okay. The other thing in the medical field is getting payments from people, especially if it's COVID or whatever. Did they get funds if people couldn't pay and they had COVID? I can't remember if that was part of one of the grants. They're showing their last budget. They ran a deficit of 144,000. Um, you know what I don't see. Is that the one where you asked? Um, they did get PPP. That's why there was 162,000 in payroll if they had furloughed employees. What I don't see in these paperwork is a comparison from last year. Did we request that? Is that one of the things we requested? Comparison for? Like I don't see 19 to 20. We only see in any of their documents. They have, Christine, they did have, um, they, it was a request from them, and it was a separate brochure that she sent in some with some direction, some additional information to the state of the government. Okay, here it is. Yeah. These are still 20. Sorry, I have to look at my finger. So both the things they submitted was their financial position as of August 31st, 20, and their statement of activity. So nothing still to compare against. Well, on the first the page, they say PPP oh. account, they got 17,500 in here. There was a 2018 19 audit. Okay. Financial assets. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. So. <laughs> The one they submitted to us after the fact, PPP account is zero, and they got PPP money. They had 17550 on their first August 31st one, and the CARES Act is negative 298. 
Which one is that? Oh, it's in the book. That was on the first, their first statement of financial position. Okay. Total bank accounts three 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 million three forty nine three million. And they did break it down here. Cash and equivalents. So the reason they're showing the PPP on that is a negative, just so everybody understands. Mm -hmm. It's a loan is why they're showing it on a financial statement that way. So it's like a debt until it's forgiven, which mm -hmm. Um, only, obviously, I think for more for medical people, they're going to get forgiven it's easily. It's only three hundred dollars. So. Oh, I've got one hundred thousand one eighty nine fifty five. Oh, where was that? <laughs> oh, that's PPS. What the hell is a PPS? <laughs> yeah, I know. Revenue is a minus. Oh, Medicare PPS. That's My bad. Is that something they normally get? Yeah. It just seems weird. They don't really show any kind of grant. They do, you know, they have the PPP account, which is actually zero. Oh, and the CARES Act was 17550 So maybe they haven't really received any PPP yet. Although, August 31st, 2020, they should have. But I think here. But they did say they received it. Uh, on, in my notes report i i said they got they were received 150,000 to through to 350,000 for that somewhere in that amount that they were um approved for <coughs> i mean would you like me to go and make copies of, of no the, <coughs> that you. report no i mean just for people to see but uh no, and you didn't I think I, my word for it. We but. believe you. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> the only difference would be was it federal or state? They still got. I mean, according to my notes, they had they got the PPP. Um, they had to have gotten the medical grant because they did pay the 600, 300. So that's a wash. They had mm -hmm. to pay that money out no matter what. Um, They have a lot of government securities. That's safe, safe investing. I mean, what I was thinking, I was move, I was going to move that um, new beginnings, Franklin BNA, um, Lakes Region Mental Health. We already voted on Lakes Region, but we well, can we bring can it up again. Revisit that. I would yeah. say that. Um, and waypoint i would motion that we just give them a dollar each i i would disagree to that because my my concern right now is yeah if they don't have to pay it back great on them but if when if they do and they come back next year or the year after that asking for more fun money from town we say no <laughs> i am all in favor of trying to save money for the town but i do trying to think ahead you know <laughs> it's kind of hard to do when i'm not feeling too well <laughs> yeah i mean we have to think well, ahead also be, be my motion if anybody wants to second it um we could discuss it oh okay. i'll second well, motion okay all right so now we're discussing it the thing is if 
a lot with what's happened, the discussion with um, the, even our town, they have money which is a surplus from the state and it will benefit everyone in the long run. For one year. Yeah. For one year, yeah. right. And that's why I would just do $1 because I want them to revisit us. And I, I assume that we would be back to normal next year. I'm just thinking this year, um, yeah. yeah maybe. That COVID is gone at that point, but um, I'm just saying that um, what we're doing is giving them more money than they need. So by leaving a dollar in the selectmen can transfer money into the line if you zero it out the, what we're saying is no we're not paying them anything next year it's a whole new ball game you can put whatever you want in that well line. it's just that if we don't give them money we don't send them a letter well we can ask that everybody in 2020 be sent a letter mm. okay i'm just saying i mean i just uh -huh. want you to be aware of that well, we should do that then because Red Red Cross didn't get a letter and that'll be one of our discussions today because they were zero. So yeah, so we'll we just can add to the that. motion and they they have to get letters. Not that no, we want to chase money, right, John? I mean, chase we, people to give up money. Yeah, I mean, next year when we meet, we can say, you know, what agencies we want to send out. Right. I mean, if you rather, letters. we can always do some more research and oh. ask get some more information from all of these agencies again to say how much did you actually receive and how much do you have to pay back ted is um concerned about that so is that something that you could do jen oh sorry because we there's no rush really to vote on any of this stuff we have no. a couple of months so to that point though the one only question i have is on the motion you did say zero dollars do not count them anything no i said one said dollar. Dollar. i said one dollar okay. yeah mine was zero yeah, yeah. so um if we want to i think i'm ready to vote i just want to look at one more thing but yeah be up to everybody else too well, did you want to request more information no or i mean yeah, I, would, these I would large, actually, these large ones are you know it's pretty I just want to look at one. I like being thorough. So, I mean, if I could understand better what they what they're receiving for money and um we would just have to see what if they have more expenses than normal. I mean, what kind of negative situation are they in? Are they but in a negative expense? situation this year? You know, if they are, then we we should support them, but if they the other thing is, is and you look at a lot of these uh, statements, and they're to June thirtieth mm -hmm. of uh, two thousand and twenty. A lot's changed, a lot. So you know, and when they submitted it, so that would be is it fiscal year. Uh, fiscal year, if they have end of some of them had fiscal years, some had different fiscal years than what they presented to us because it wasn't over yet or whatnot. So since July June, is some of them. Yeah. So since June thirtieth, um, checks have rolled out to a lot of people, and so we don't really know what they're really getting, where, where, where <clears throat> things are really at, yeah. not up to date financials and, and what they receive. So, so maybe are you looking to see what their uh, actual financials are as of this date? Balances. Because they would have gotten this money before what, by the time they showed to us. And to me, the money is to pay payroll that they already budgeted. So that's extra. Mm -hmm. And then uh, state grants and stuff were supposed to help for un unexpected expenses that they, we mm -hmm. need related to COVID or whatnot. Um, so maybe we should just send a letter to everyone and say, what did you re receive for COVID funds and how did that impact your bottom line? Would that well, he wants to see if we if we showed us that you know what they received state and federal would be good yeah and all oh, so, local too right so but if they show what it's used for you have to realize that they budgeted for that so we have to compare what they budgeted and did they go over or if they 
just spent what they budgeted, then that money is really still extra. So and I see it from a the numbers part. The thing is, is you know, ask what they receive, but what, what are their revenues? Did they draw? So what would what, so. what would be the proper question to ask to know what really happened with that money? Would we ask them what did you receive for federal, state, and local COVID money, and how are your expenses? more than this well i i would say what they received and then what did they have to spend above their budget because if they only okay. had to spend yeah they had to add another employee and it was ten thousand dollars and they got one hundred and fifty three thousand. it's still extra money because the money was already budgeted in there so but then having the actual like john says is maybe uh let's say in the medical one people who can't pay their bills right but medicare lots that's of, what came revenue, in all this other sticks lots thing. of revenue yeah basically yeah so maybe their actuals as of what's today's date so a quarter would be 9 30 2020. so i'm going to withdraw my notice? motion right now would you want to withdraw your second absolutely okay all right so let's have Janice send out letters to New Beginnings, Franklin VNA, CASA, Lakes Region Mental Health, CAP, and Waypoint. Why aren't we asking all of them? Because um, I know we asked for it from uh, so the all, Pines, I forget what they're called. So TN Rec, yeah, the Pines Community Center. I would say we don't need old home day. We don't need Park Island Center, Concert, Park Cemetery, Hawaii Hilton Hawaii. Concert. You know what I mean? Yeah, but old, everybody old else. Right. Okay. So just the really small local people. Um, I mean, the library, I still want to see that. I still want to see the Pines. Okay. Because um, they sent this long out. Okay. Almost at the point. important part is what um, there are other losses of revenue, which might have offset. Right. That. So you know, because they could say, oh, well, we get seventy thousand yeah. dollars, but they were closed. So they lost that revenue. So if we say, hey. So actual 70. revenue and expenses as of 930. But for the library in that case, I mean, if they received money and they weren't open, I mean, but they still paid. So it, they actually had the money already um, um, allotted to them and then they received extra money so that would be something that they would be saving money in because they're not mm -hmm. really working it's, it's, they're not there's no not there's no revenue of, loss there not a lot of books are i mean and even the pines has doesn't have a big revenue stream but right. uh, they they did lose some um yeah they had how much one like fundraiser they, they didn't do yeah, yeah. But also, also have to refund money for kids who didn't go to the camp, I believe. Right, right. Yeah, but um, in retrospect, also some of them may have spent because they had the chance to have extra money and do other things. And I personally worked through the whole. And I still work through the whole thing, and I, you know, people like, you know, I don't want to point out certain ones here. They got paid to not work so right. but yeah, the ppp was required to do that so but they're they didn't spend the payroll yet they didn't get daycare expenses or whatever or whatever whichever one it's just i still think this is our chance to save for one time one time right no me too i, I mean I, i'm not you don't need to um, and they're all asking for the same amount when they already got extra money. That's how I see it. Yeah. So what we'd like to know is what have you received for federal, local, state COVID related monies? In what form? That is it the loan? That's forgiven or not, and what extra expenses
did you incur this year? Above your budget. Above your normal budget. So what he's saying is what type of loan, because then we'd know what they had to use it for. So if they got PPP, right. I know what what percentage they could use for this and the rest for payroll, whatnot. SBA, state. And the purpose of the, the question really is to know um, what your the fiscal your fiscal situation is. For 2020. For 2020, right. That's going to carry over to 21. Right. Is that how's that sound? Good. Mm -hmm. Are we going to send a tip for the ones that you love? Yeah. Or will it be to fall? Well, we, I don't think we need to do old home day. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to do uh, the Tilton concert if we've already voted on them. What about cemetery? Do we need and, to do that? No, no, no. Cemetery. They, they wouldn't. They didn't get any. Yeah. yeah. So. so everyone except for those three. Let's see. Um, yeah. Somebody said they didn't receive any money uh, in done payment. Uh, because they oh. thought they couldn't oh. because it was nonprofit, but we did get an email later and she said she learned that they could or could have. Right, she did say yeah, that. But, they, but yeah. PPP deadline is, was done August 8th, I think. Hmm. Um, but they probably can check into because I know some of the SBA state levels and other are still carrying on because of people who didn't get any. Like the PPP started out where all the big conglomerate companies took all the money right away. Then they said, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to do one more round, but it'll be for the smaller people. And that's, you know, so I don't know if that's what they did. So when she this. came in so a few assistance. weeks ago, she, she was said a, that she didn't, they they didn't, never did apply for it. Right, because she said nonprofit. She so didn't think it, she could. And I'm like, huh? Is it? So she checked. So we should send her a letter anyways, and she'll say, no, I didn't apply. And, and I, yeah. yeah, I forget who yeah. that was. Youth Assistance Don, Program. Youth yeah. Assistant. Don Schimberg. Yeah. Youth Assistant. Yeah. I'm on their board of directors. What kind of timeline do you want to give them? I mean, you want, you know, we have to tell them, you know, we need it back by two days. Weeks. So, Quick. how much time do you think people need to? The next meeting's the 18th. Yeah. yeah. So, if we get it in email, you reach notice. <laughs> Friday before. So, we have the weekend, okay. Monday and Tuesday. Or? Or next we month? To ask for get one week. But yeah. Well, well, we're not yeah. asking for their entire financial situation. Right, right. Um, I mean, and we don't really have to vote until end of December, anyways. But uh, we could give them two weeks, and then could deal with it in December. Mm. <laughs> which <laughs> leaves us. On. Which leaves us. What are we going to do on the next meeting, on the 18th? Yeah, so we're gonna, I we're going to meet in two weeks. We do. We have um, we requested to have that be on the department heads, and we we have Kevin Duval of the um, public works director coming in on the 18th. Okay, great. Good. So we and we have the form. We can start being ready for him. Okay. So. I have to say, I spoke with him one time, and he's he's really on his game as like manager. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Quite, he asked how you were treated, how empl his employees. I mean, he and he has notes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, so yeah. he's really very, very hands-on managerial. From what I saw, I was shocked for it being public work. <laughs> so, yeah, right. No, take those. Didn't yeah. in the very nice testimony as well during the whole COVID process. How he was very, you know, his approach was very frugal on fixing things and yeah. I want to say being very creative in how we he handled some of the modifications that were made here on town hall. And it's over the uh past couple years, the reduction of outside uh, contractors has been a lot too. He has proven to be an asset. To the town. Yes, yes, I've been impressed. Of, there's a lot of um, sub doubt stuff that was done before. Yeah. Careful management. Yes. And you know what? The, and the guys seem really happy too. So he does not That's like spending fun. necessary time or money. Now, we did receive a um, update from Community Action Program, but 
these are all towns that really aren't relevant to us. You know, we'd ask for um, imperative services uh -huh. and requests, but they're all in Guilford, Alton, Barnstead, Gilmanton, Laconia. The only close one was Samberton. So mm -hmm. usually we're, we're we're dealing with Franklin Hill, Samberton, Northfield, you know, towns that surround a, that are similar to us. Um, so it didn't. Did you have something? I feel, yes, Bill. I, I did send her an email on that, and she replied that um, you know, well, what exactly, what exactly do I want? I told her I wanted something very similar to what she provided, but for some towns that are in close proximity in size to. To Tilton, and um, but, uh, it's not really clear what you want. So I, you know, I spelled out. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, if you had last year's sheet, you could fax that to her. This is what you gave us last year, and it has all the the towns that are adjacent to us. But I haven't heard back from her okay. to fulfill that part of the request yet either. So, I mean, it was sort of like she didn't understand. I, I mean, I told her what she sent was fine, except for it just didn't seem like it was comparing apples to apples. Right. That's where that stands. I mean, in the past, we've always seen the same thing, but um, well, actually, what they sent us was a breakdown of all the services. And they did that for every town that was adjacent to us. That Franklin be served. Before, yeah, Franklin. Now that maybe they're because they're Laconia, they were just relating to Laconia. Well, maybe we'll get something over the next few days. I'm not sure. We don't quite have Guilford's revenue. <laughs> right. Shucks. Okay, so we're all set for next meeting. Uh, correspondence, we have budget committee goals and responsibilities. I just want to make a comment on what we're asking. I, I uh -huh. think we want to make sure it's not in paragraph type form. You know, just give us the number, what you spelled out, that kind of thing. Because I'm looking at this one, I'm like, I can't even figure it out. I'm already starting. Yeah, I'm trying to look online. It's it's difficult to uh, make heads or tails on this. <laughs> information. Because a lot of the information seems to be getting, you know, it just it, there's a lot of information and it's hard to decipher. Even though we give them a format, it's still not crystal clear. It doesn't sound like it's crystal clear. And this is maybe a, an unusual year to look at some of the information, but maybe we ask them very specific questions. And I don't want to get off topic here, but maybe something, who's the thought, anyhow, put in the back of our head for what we do address the new form. Well, just so you know, Janice, we ask them the same thing practically every year. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and they don't always respond yeah. to what we want. So I turnover, mean, I guess you can say, is some of the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, November 18th. All right. Um, any other? If they get it in between before two weeks, could you send it so we oh, can absolutely. condense? Yeah, if they come in, I'll send them. I mean, you could be, we could be right out front and say, we want to know if you've benefited from COVID money so that we don't have to give you any. <laughs> I mean, we, could just, we could just tell, ask, tell well, them. Well, you know, then they're going to you know? hide things. You know? I mean, um, false, we, false wanna, we just want to know, um, you know, we don't have, we're not giving you a lot of money and we feel that you're getting a lot. So we're trying to save a little bit for us too. I mean, you know. Um, Do you have the website that you looked on for that you got these funds off of? I think it's ProPublica. ProPublica? Yeah. I got the uh, SBA too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, have yeah. that, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if that's Yeah, but I mean, I just Googled COVID yeah. monies. And that and that came up as a website that listed everybody in in the United that States. I mean, that was a. Now I know the SBA had other non-forgivable loans that people could apply for. You know, like it was. Can't remember the name of it, but there was a lot of loans that people could apply for for low interest rates. But that would be strictly loans. All right, is there anything else? Mm -mm. Motion to adjourn is in order. Second. Second. <laughs>
<laughs> Beat you. <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, you win. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Good night, Ted. Yeah. Good night. Night. Okay. I'm so glad he was able to join us remotely. What's that? Oh, I'm so I'm so glad he was able to join us remotely. Yeah, he yeah. He wasn't didn't have to leave us. Yeah. He's a okay, do some nice homework person. with these figures and we can still get in there. Okay. Yeah, it kind of depend on you a lot, Christine, because you know figures. I know that's why I put, I put Tim right under the gun there. Cause I'm like, you're giving me the run around <laughs> where this is. Well, it's it's inappropriate. Really, and I'm like, if you sit down with Tim, but we're doing it. Yeah, he stuff. said, tell me municipal. We always joked about years ago, municipal map. Like, wait, this doesn't make sense. And then we look at it and you see how it actually flows. And it's like, but I think the important thing to different. remember what he was talking about is the unreserved fund. Mm -hmm. That's where the money goes that, you know, because we raised an appropriate X amount of dollars. A lot of things is governed by DRH, chapter mm -hmm. 32, 31. But we raise and appropriate this amount of money to spend for these purposes. And then we send it to DRA and they say, okay, do it. Legislative body.